unveiling Anne Boleyn, the untold and bizarre facts of Tudor England's enigma. Behind the grandeur of Tudor palaces and the glittering court life lies the tale of a woman whose story is shrouded in mystery and controversy. From witchcraft accusations to a sixth finger, Anne Boleyn's life was anything but ordinary. Today, we delve into the shadows of history to uncover the strange and lesser-known facts about one of England's most infamous queens. Stay tuned as we unravel the mysterious life of Anne Boleyn that history books often overlook. Welcome back to Freaky Facts, history's oddities, where we explore the peculiar corners of history and unearth the stories that time almost forgot. In this episode, we're peeling back the layers of Tudor history to reveal the bizarre truths about Anne Boleyn, King Henry VIII's most notorious queen. From her peculiar physical traits to her alleged involvement in the dark arts, get ready to discover the intriguing and eccentric facts about Anne Boleyn that will leave you astonished. The Sixth Finger Myth Among the many tales that swirl around Anne Boleyn, one of the most fascinating and persistent is the myth of her having a sixth finger on her right hand. This peculiar detail has not only captivated historians, but also fueled rampant speculation and accusations of witchcraft for centuries. But where does myth end and reality begin? Today, we're diving deep into the archives to uncover the truth behind this enigmatic claim. Historical accounts vary, with some suggesting that Anne had a small extra nail or a piece of flesh that resembled an extra finger, while others vehemently deny its existence altogether. This ambiguity has only added to the legend's allure. The Tudor era was a time rife with superstition and fear of the occult. Any physical deviation from the norm could be, and often was, construed as a sign of witchcraft. Anne's purported extra digit symbolized her otherness, a mark of suspicion that set her apart from her contemporaries. The fascination with Anne's supposed sixth finger has transcended time, becoming a piece of the puzzle that is her enduring legacy. Despite the lack of concrete evidence to conclusively prove its existence, the myth persists. Was it a mere anatomical anomaly? Or was Tudor propaganda aimed at demonizing a queen seen as too influential, too controversial, or simply too different? As we peel back the layers of history, the mystery of Anne Boleyn's sixth finger reminds us of the power of rumor and the shadow it can cast over a legacy. A witch by reputation. In the tapestry of Anne Boleyn's life, one of the darkest threads is the accusation of witchcraft. These allegations were more than mere court gossip. They were a critical weapon used by her enemies to engineer her downfall. But what was the basis for such chilling claims and how did they contribute to the tragic end of a queen? This segment uncovers the sinister undercurrents of superstition and fear that defined Tudor England, setting the stage for Anne's ultimate demise. Anne Boleyn's intelligence, charisma and influence at court were unprecedented for a woman of her time. To some, these traits were evidence of her exceptional capability. To others, they were signs of sorcery. The accusations of witchcraft were bolstered by Anne's failure to produce a male heir and her involvement in courtly intrigues. Rumours circulated that she had used love potions to ensnare King Henry VIII and her miscarrying of a male fetus was seen as proof of her pact with the devil. The societal fear of witchcraft in Tudor England cannot be overstated. Witch hunts and trials were common, and accusations of witchcraft could lead to the most severe of punishments. In this climate of fear and suspicion, Anne's perceived differences and the unfortunate events in her marriage were twisted into evidence of her guilt. The irony of these accusations is that they were a reflection of the times and a tool of political manipulation used by Henry VIII and his advisers as a convenient pretext for her removal from power. The legacy of Anne Boleyn is inseparably intertwined with the accusations of witchcraft that hastened her fall. 
These rumors, once whispered in the corridors of power, have echoed through history, painting a portrait of a woman whose life was as much defined by her achievements as the dark whispers of her enemies marred it. In exploring the truth behind the tales of sorcery, we confront not just the story of Anne's downfall, but the broader narrative of fear, power, and the scapegoating of women in history. The Falcon Crest In the rich tapestry of Tudor symbolism, Anne Boleyn's choice of the falcon as her personal emblem stands out as a poignant marker of her identity and fate. This segment delves into the layered symbolism behind the falcon crest, exploring how it reflected Anne's aspirations, her royal status, and the volatile nature of her rise and fall in the Tudor court. The falcon, a bird renowned for its predatory prowess and majestic flight, was a fitting representation of Anne's journey to the pinnacle of power, as well as her precipitous descent. The falcon crest was not chosen lightly, the falcon symbolizes keen intellect, strategic vision, and noble spirit in heraldry. For Anne, adopting this emblem upon her ascension to Queen Consort was a declaration of her attributes and intentions. The falcon, depicted with its wings spread wide and a crown around its neck, signified Anne's royal authority and her ambition to soar above the conventional constraints placed upon women of her era. Yet. The choice of the falcon was also emblematic of the fragility of Anne's position. Just as a falcon can ascend to great heights, it must inevitably return to the earth. Anne's rapid rise through the ranks of the court, fueled by her wit, charm, and the king's favor, was mirrored by her swift downfall. Once a symbol of her triumph and potential, the falcon crest became a somber reminder of her tragic end. The enduring legacy of Anne Boleyn's Falcon Crest transcends its historical origins, symbolizing her complex legacy, a woman who broke barriers, reshaped a kingdom, and ultimately paid the price for her ambition. Today, the Falcon Emblem continues to fascinate historians, artists, and admirers of Anne's story, serving as a compelling reminder of her impact on Tudor history and the perilous nature of royal favour. A Secret Marriage? Among the myriad of stories that orbit Anne Boleyn's enigmatic figure, one of the most compelling is her rumoured secret engagement to Henry Percy, the Earl of Northumberland. This chapter ventures into the heart of the Tudor court's romantic entanglements, unearthing the forbidden love that, had fate willed it otherwise, could have dramatically altered the course of English history. The tale of Anne and Henry Percy is not merely a footnote in the saga of Anne's life. It is a testament to the complexities of love and power in the Tudor era. The story begins in the early 1520s, within the sophisticated and politically charged atmosphere of the court of Cardinal Wolsey. Here, Anne Boleyn, a young lady of notable wit and beauty, caught the eye of Henry Percy, heir to one of the wealthiest and most influential families in England. Their attraction was immediate and profound, leading to a secret betrothal, a promise of marriage that was as passionate as it was prohibited. However, the course of true love never did run smooth, especially not at the Tudor court, where political alliances and royal favor dictated the ties that could be formed or broken. When their secret engagement came to light, it was met with fierce opposition from Cardinal Wolsey and King Henry VIII himself, who had begun to show an interest in Anne. The betrothal was annulled, and Percy was hurriedly married off to another, sealing the end of their love story, but igniting the spark of what was to become one of the most tumultuous royal affairs in history. The remnants of this forbidden affair whispered love letters, rumored secret meetings, and the heartache of a love lost, paint a vivid picture of Anne's early years at court. They reveal a woman capable of deep affection, caught in the ruthless machinations of power, 
This episode in Anne's life raises tantalising questions about how history might have unfolded had she become the Countess of Northumberland instead of the Queen of England. Perhaps it was this very capacity for love and the tragedy of its denial that propelled Anne into the heart of the Tudor dynasty, forever altering its course. Innovator of fashion and language. Anne Boleyn's legacy extends far beyond the political and religious tumult of her marriage to Henry VIII. She was a pioneering figure in the world of fashion and a connoisseur of language whose influence reshaped the cultural landscape of Tudor England. This chapter delves into how Anne, with her keen eye for style and her exposure to French elegance, became an unlikely but enduring icon of cultural innovation, leaving an indelible mark on the era's aesthetic and linguistic heritage. During her time in the French court, Anne absorbed the nuances of one of Europe's most sophisticated cultures. Upon her return to England, she brought a treasure trove of French fashions, from intricate headpieces to luxurious fabrics that challenged the English dress norms. Her wardrobe, characterized by its elegance and innovation, quickly set the standard at court, with nobles vying to mirror her style. Anne's sartorial choices were not merely about personal vanity, they were a statement of her cosmopolitanism and a reflection of her aspirations for the English court. But Anne's influence wasn't confined to the visual. She also introduced a plethora of French phrases and expressions into the English courtly vernacular, enriching the linguistic tapestry of the nobility. With her sharp wit and flair for conversation, she became a trendsetter in language and fashion. These phrases, initially a symbol of sophistication and courtly refinement, gradually permeated broader English society, contributing to the evolution of the English language. Anne Boleyn's impact on Tudor culture was profound, transcending her political and personal controversies. Through her fashion and linguistic contributions, she played a pivotal role in the cultural renaissance of the English court blending the traditions of two nations to create something uniquely enduring. Her legacy in fashion and language serves as a testament to her influence, demonstrating that even amidst the turbulence of her life and the tragedy of her end, Anne's mark on English history was not solely written in the annals of power, but also in the very fabric of society. The Tragic Downfall and Execution Anne Boleyn's rapid ascent to the throne as Queen of England was a story of ambition, love and political manoeuvring. Yet her fall was equally swift, marked by betrayal, jealousy and a deadly web of court intrigue that led to her execution. This chapter examines the complex factors and key players that contributed to her tragic downfall revealing the volatile nature of Tudor politics and the fragile position of those who navigated its dangerous waters. Anne's marriage to Henry VIII had once seemed to secure her position, but the failure to produce a male heir gradually eroded the king's affection. Henry's wandering eye and Anne's miscarriages intensified the court's focus on her inability to secure the Tudor succession. Amidst this growing tension, Anne's outspoken nature and political involvement began to alienate her from powerful courtiers, including Thomas Cromwell, the King's chief minister, with whom she had several political disagreements, particularly regarding the dissolution of monasteries and the distribution of church wealth. The court of Henry VIII was a hotbed of jealousy and competition, with many envious of Anne's position and influence. Her sharp tongue and refusal to conform to the submissive role expected of women of her time further isolated her within the court. Rumours of her infidelity began to circulate, fueled by her enemies and those eager to see her replaced as queen. In April 1536, a musician in Anne's service, Mark Smeaton, was arrested and tortured into confessing an affair with the queen. His confession became the cornerstone of the case against Anne, prompting the arrest of several other men, including her own brother, George Boleyn, 
on charges of incest and treason. Anne's trial was a spectacle designed to legitimize her removal and replace her with a queen who could produce a male heir. Despite a lack of concrete evidence, the jury, comprised of peers and family members pressured by the king's will, found her guilty. Her execution was a grim conclusion to a series of orchestrated moves to eliminate a queen who had become inconvenient to the king's political and personal desires. On the morning of May 19, 1536, Anne Boleyn met her fate with dignity and courage. Her final words were not bitterness, but forgiveness toward Henry and a plea for mercy for those accused with her. Her execution was not merely the tragic end of a queen, but marked a pivotal moment in English history, highlighting the perilous intersection of personal vendettas and political machinations. Anne Boleyn's story is a poignant reminder of the dangers of courtly intrigue and the volatile nature of power. Her downfall was a complex interplay of factors, including her failure to produce a male heir, her political rival's ambitions, and a king all too willing to believe the worst about a wife he had once moved heaven and earth to marry. The legacy of her tragic fall from grace underscores the ruthlessness of Tudor politics and the tragic fate of a queen caught in its crossfire. The final resting place, Anne Boleyn's death and burial. Following her execution, Anne Boleyn's story did not end with her death. The handling of her final moments and her burial site speaks volumes about her status in life and in death. Anne's body and head were not given a queen's burial. Instead, they were buried in an unmarked grave within the chapel of St. Peter at Vincula, within the Tower of London. This humble resting place starkly contrasted her once lofty position. Anne's grave was unmarked for centuries, her memory overshadowed by her execution and Henry VIII's successive marriages. It wasn't until the 19th century that a memorial tile was placed in the chapel, finally acknowledging her resting place among other executed queens and nobles. Today, Anne Boleyn's grave draws visitors worldwide, a testament to her enduring legacy and the fascination surrounding her life and death. Anne Boleyn's life was rife with intrigue, controversy and tragedy. Beyond the well-trodden tales of her marriage to Henry VIII and her tragic end, Anne's story is filled with oddities and lesser-known facts that paint a picture of a complex and ahead-of-her-time figure. From her alleged sixth finger to her role as a cultural icon, Anne Boleyn continues to fascinate and mystify us to this day. If you're intrigued by the mysterious life of Anne Boleyn and want to dive deeper into the oddities of history, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to Freaky Facts, History's Oddities. Your engagement helps us uncover more fascinating stories from the annals of history. Got a peculiar historical figure or event you want us to explore next? Drop your suggestions in the comments below. Until next time, keep seeking the strange in history.